Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. Uh, so, in this module, let us look at uh, another fundamental uh, property or fundamental result for the uh, for the Gaussian channel, which is the capacity, characterize the capacity of the Gaussian channel. So, what we are interested in doing in this module is to look at the capacity of the we will look at the capacity of the Gaussian channel. So, what do we mean by a Gaussian channel? This is one of the most as we have seen several times in this course, this is one of the most relevant practically relevant and so, we have an input we have an output and what do we mean by an Gaussian channel is that the input and the output are related by the addition are related by the addition of white Gaussian noise. So, we have y equals x plus n where n is additive white Gaussian noise mean equals 0 and power equals the variance equals sigma square. Okay. So, this is basically the channel adds Gaussian noise or white Gaussian noise. Channel adds white Gaussian noise. This is one of the as I have already mentioned it several times before, it is one of the most practically relevant this is one of the most frequently encountered. and practically relevant communication channel models. And what do we mean by the capacity of this channel? Remember by capacity we mean the fundamental rate at which or the maximum rate at which information can be transmitted across this channel with an arbitrarily low at an arbitrarily low probability of error. Okay. So, the capacity has a fundamental relevance in communication system because it gives us. So, the capacity is this is of fundamental relevance because capacity that gives us this is basically maximum rate of information transfer maximum rate of information transfer at an arbitrarily low at an arbitrarily low probability of error. Okay. So, we have 
the capacity at which we can it is the maximum rate of information transfer at an arbitrarily low probability of error. And we have seen that the capacity from the fundamental result by Shannon is given as the maximum of the mutual information that is, is given by the maximum of the mutual information okay, which is still valid here except and the maximum has to be over the input probability density functions that is we have to maximize this mutual information over input However, we have an additional constraint here that is the input power is limited. Okay. So, what we are doing here is we are trying to find the capacity, the capacity is given by the maximum maximization of the maximum of the mutual information correct, maximize the mutual information. However, unlike the case of the discrete sources, here we have an additional constraint for the continuous source that the power of the source has to be limited by this quantity. Similar to a practical wireless communication scenario in which we have a constraint that the transmit power right, each transmitter right. For instance, when you have a telephone system or when you have a mobile phone, the mobile phone for instance is limited by the battery alright. So, there has to be a power source in any communication system and the communication system and that power source limits the amount of power that can be used by the transmitter. So, naturally it is a very meaningful constraint because if obviously, if you can transmit an infinite power, then you can one can transmit at any rate that one wishes to because if, the, if there is no power constraint then one can uh, uh, th in theory one can transmit an arbitrarily high power and overcome the effect of any noise. But the challenge is to overcome the limitations of noise imposed by the channel using a battery which, uh, which supports transmission at a finite power or with a maximum certain maximum power. So, that is the key aspect here. Okay. So, I have a source or let us say I have a transmitter correct a transmitting a signal x. However, this is basically connected to a power source. which supplies the power. So, this transmitter let us say the power is p. So, my transmit power that is has to be limited and remember transmit power is nothing but the expected value of x square. So, the transmit power has to be limited by p. So, I have to maximize capacity. So, you would like to maximize capacity of the channel. but subject to subject to the power constraint maximize the capacity but subject to the power constraint that is the total transmit power is limited by this quantity okay now let us proceed by doing that. Okay. Now, first in order to do this first realize that from our definition of mutual information, the mutual information is nothing but h x minus h x given y. This is the mutual information. Okay. So, this is the entropy, this is 
uh, let us write it in a slightly different form of course, we know it is also equal to no harm because this is also correct. So, this is h x minus h x given y equals h y minus h y given x. This is particularly convenient for us as we are going to see shortly, this is a particularly convenient form and h y given x this of course, h y is the differential entropy of y you must have you are all you must already be familiar with these quantities h y given x is the differential entropy of y given x. Now, if you can look at if you go back and look at our channel model y equals x plus n, n is Gaussian remember the notation is n is Gaussian mean equal to 0 variance equals sigma square. Now, with the addition of y now given y basically you have Gaussian noise n. Now, given x it means x is a constant and this constant x is being added to the Gaussian noise. So, if a constant is added to a 0 mean Gaussian random variable all it does is it simply shifts the mean right. The mean of this Gaussian noise n is 0 the addition of this constant x simply shifts the mean to x and the variance remains unchanged. So, given x now you have to realize this is something very important given x y equal to Gaussian mean equal to 0 variance uh, I am sorry mean is equal to x it simply shifts the mean mean is equal to x variance remains unchanged. So, given x given x x plus n simply shifts mean variance the variance remains unchanged. Therefore, if you look at y given x this is distributed as Gaussian remember n denotes Gaussian or normal with mean x and variance sigma square. Therefore, h of y given x the first inter interesting property you will observe is h of y given x is h of Gaussian source with mean x variance sigma square. The differential entropy of a Gaussian random variable or a Gaussian source with mean and variance sigma with a given mean and variance sigma square we have seen it is independent of mean the mean it does not depend on the mean it is simply half log to the base 2 2 pi sigma square e correct which does not depend on the mean x. So, this is a constant. So, basically this is simply equal to half depends only on the variance. In fact, to refresh your memory we might as well look at what we have derived previously that it is half log to the base 2 log to the base 2 2 pi sigma square it does not depend on the uh, does not depend on the mean we have seen that before does not depend on mean x. So, given x the differential entropy of y that is the differential entropy of y given x is simply half log to the base 2 2 pi sigma square e. Now, what about h of y? Now, let us look at y. Okay. So, i of y i of so the mutual information between x comma y now boils down to well it is h of my h of y minus h of y given x which is now h of y minus h of y given x is half log to the base 2 2 pi sigma square e. 
Now, what about this quantity h of y? Before we look at y, let us look at what is y, y equals x plus n. Let us assume that x is also 0 mean, although this let us relax this and assume that x is also 0 mean. And further an important property in the communication system is that the signal x and the noise y are independent because the noise is added by the channel or at the receiver and x is the transmit symbols. All right. So, these two arise from fundamentally different processes. One is the signal, the other is the noise and the signal and noise these come from different sources. Correct. These are there are different mechanisms which give rise to the signal and noise. Therefore, these two random variables are independent. Okay. So, that is not one of the fundamental assumptions. these are independent. Now, as a consequence of that what we are going to have is that expected value of x into n if these are independent x and n are independent this is equal to expected value of x into expected value of n this is 0, this is 0. So, this is equal to 0. So, this also implies that they are uncorrelated, implies signal and noise are uncorrelated. So, independence implies that signal and noise are Now, therefore, at this point if you look at this uh, y is equal to expected is x uh, well let us look at expected y, expected y is of course, y is x plus n. So, this is expected x plus expected n which is equal to 0 plus 0 equal to 0. Further if you look at expected y square this is equal to well expected x plus n whole square which is equal to you can simplify this as expected value of x square plus n square plus 2 x n. Now, we know what is expected x square. So, this is equal to expected x square plus expected n square plus twice expected value of x comma n. Of course, these are uncorrelated. So, this is 0. Expected n square this is equal to sigma square. Now, this is less than or equal to which means remember the source power is limited power of the transmitter is limited therefore expected x square is less than or equal to p therefore we have using this and the independence between signal and noise we obtain expected y square is less than or equal to p by sigma square we let us denote this by sigma tilde square so we have the assumption that expected y square or we have the result not the assumption we have the result that expected y square is less than or equal to sigma tilde square. Okay. So, that is the uh, so. So, now we have to maximize remember we have to maximize the mutual information subject to transmit power is p we can equally frame that as subject as maximizing the mutual information subject to the receive power that is power of y being p plus sigma square that is sigma tilde square. So, naturally if the transmit power is p noise power is sigma square the maximum power received can be p plus sigma square that is sigma tilde square that is what I am going to do. Okay. So, I write c equal to max well now 
over instead of f of x choose the probability density function y such that expected y square less than or equal to sigma tilde square maximize the mutual information y between x and y. Now, we have already seen very interestingly this is maximum f of y subject to f of y expected y square less than or equal to sigma tilde square h of my h of y minus half log 2 pi sigma square log to the base 2 2 pi sigma. Now, if you observe this, this is your h of y given x, this is a constant, constant in the sense does not depend on, uh, it does not depend on y or it does not depend on the input probability density function y. Very interestingly, h of y given x, right, h of y given x, because given x, y is simply Gaussian noise, y is simply Gaussian noise with mean x variance sigma square. So, h of y given x does not depend on, uh, does not depend on this uh, probability, it, it does not depend on this quantity with which respect to which, with, it does not depend on sigma tilde, it does not depend on uh, this, okay. So, basically this is a constant. Okay, which means the only quantity that needs to be maximized with respect to the probability density function of y is equivalently, I can write this as max f of y the prob with respect to the probability density function of y expected y square less than or equal to sigma tilde square h of y because this is the only quantity now that has to be maximized with respect to the probability density function of y minus this constant half log 2 pi sigma square c. So, only this needs to be maximized because half log 2 pi sigma square e this is a constant. So, only this needs to be maximized with respect to pdf of y okay so that is where we are currently so now we have to maximize this differential entropy of y of the output y with respect to the pdf that is choose an appropriate pdf which maximizes the differential entropy of this output y but subject to the constraint that the power at the output is less than or equal to sigma tilde square that is p plus sigma square. Now, how to perform this maximization of differential entropy subject to this power constraint is something that we will defer to the next model. All right. So, we will stop here basically where we are trying to characterize the capacity, the maximum rate at which information can be transmitted across a Gaussian channel that is a channel with Gaussian mass. So, we will stop here and continue in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much.